In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Google Drive. Now, first of all, what is Google Drive? Quite simply, it's a drive, like any other hard drive or flash drive you might use. It's a place to save documents. So any documents that you would save on your computer or laptop, you can also save on Google Drive. Now they're saved online, so anywhere that you can access the internet, you can access your documents which is really nice. The other thing that's great about Google Drive is that you can share documents with other people and they can also access those documents online. They can edit, make changes to the document if you need them to, or they can simply view the document if you want someone to see it. So if you have a website, Google Docs or Google Drive is a great way to share your documents on your website so that everyone can see them. Now, first of all, how do you get to Google Drive? Well, you need to be on the Google page, and you need to be signed in to Google. Once you do that, you should have a link up here that says Drive, and you can click on that, and it'll take you there. If you can't find the link to Google Drive, it's no big deal. Just search for Google Drive. And when you do, it'll pull up the link. It's always easy to find. Now. If you're like me, and you've already uploaded documents to Google Drive, then you'll have a whole list of your documents here. If you've never done anything before, then this page won't have any documents on it, obviously. Now I'm going to show you how to do three things in this video. First, I'm going to show you how to create a document. Then I'm going to show you how to upload a document. And finally, I'm going to show you how to share your documents. Okay, first creating a document. If you were typing on your computer and you didn't have access, for instance, to Microsoft Word, you could create a document within Google Drive instead of using Microsoft Word. You press Create and you press Document. If you want to make a PowerPoint presentation, you could press Presentation. If you were trying to do an Excel spreadsheet, you could press Spreadsheet. There's also this really useful one over here called Form. Google Forms is great. If you're creating a survey, if you're creating quizzes, it's really, really helpful. I use it a lot. I'm not going to show you how to use it in this video, but I really recommend playing around with this. It's a very helpful one. Now, if we want to create a document, we click Create Document. We'll be taken to a new page, and you see it kind of looks like Microsoft Word. You can immediately retitle this document. You can start typing inside of it. Everything you type is automatically saved. It's very, very simple. Now, I don't really want to create a new document right now, so I'm just going to close this out. Now, I'm also going to show you how to upload a document. You go here and you press Upload. When you do, you'll see Files. This is just like sending an attachment in email. You're going to go through and you're going to look for all of your files and upload something. So let's see what I have here that I can upload. Uh, here's an old document I have that works. So there's my document. I press open. It's going to start uploading. Now just so you notice, if you look here I have something that says Settings, Conversion On. I've uploaded a Word document but it's uploaded into the Google document format. This is a simplified, pared down format. It's going to be much um, simpler than word formatting. If you are using any kind of fancy formatting, any special fonts or charts or graphs in your document, you don't want to convert to Google Docs because you're going to lose that formatting, which isn't any good. I like to convert, however, because sometimes, for whatever reason, um, when I share my documents with students and they try to open those documents, um, if they're in the Word format, it looks funny online. It looks a little odd. I don't know why. Um, it's no problem. They can just download the document and then it will open in Microsoft Word and it's very simple. But for whatever reason, I think it looks a little funny sometimes. So I like to have my settings set to conversion on, which I change from time to time. If you'd like to know how to change that setting, you go over here to the button that says Settings, and you press Upload Settings, and then you check Convert Uploaded Files to Google Docs Format. If you're uploading something with a lot of fancy formatting and you don't want to convert, then just 
click it again and uncheck it. And now if you see, it's not going to convert. But I like to keep everything converted, so I'm going to keep it like that. Okay, final thing we're going to do is share a document. So I have this document here. This is a really old document, I think, from my previous program. It's very easy to share. You press the share button. The default setting is that the document is only available to you. No one else can see it. If you'd like to keep it so that only a select number of people can see it, you only want to share it with maybe a couple of other teachers or just one other student, then you can type in their Google email address here. Whatever their Gmail address, you type it in here. Notice that the default setting for this is can edit. That means that you're sending it to this person. They will be able to open the document and make changes to it. If you don't want that, then you should change it to can view or can comment. Now, most of the time, especially when you're sharing documents with students, you don't want to use this option because it's time consuming to type in all of your students' email addresses. So instead, you'll press change. And I usually do anyone with the link rather than public on the web. There's not much of a difference. This just keeps it a little bit more private. The default setting for this is can view. Obviously, if you're sharing a handout with students, most of the time, that's all you want. But if you're sharing some sort of handout with students and you want them to make changes, then just change it to can edit. Once you press save, there's a link up here. And all you have to do is copy the link, and then you can paste it wherever you like. You can paste it on your website, you can paste it in an email and send it to students and you're fine, okay? Okay, now I'll show you very quickly how I would paste this in my website. I'm going to go to my class website by going to blogger.com. My class website is Ashley's Classes. I'm going to go over here to New Post, let's say. I could do it there, or I could do it on one of my pages. Most likely, this is where I'm going to share documents, on the class page. So let's say this was a document I wanted to share with my intermediate grammar class. I go to my intermediate grammar page. I type in the title of that document, which was Course Policy Template. I highlight it. I press Link. And in link, I paste that big long link right here. I like to check open this link in a new window. I think that's nice. That way students don't lose your website in the process of looking for the document. That's up to you. You don't have to check that. If you check it once, it stays as the regular setting for the website. Then I press OK. And now the link is there. So if I were to update this page, students would be able to click on this and it would take them to that document. Now I'm going to remove all of this because I don't actually want this on my page. But now you get the idea. If you have any questions,